By this point, you should have Linmot Talk installed on your computer, firmware downloaded into the drive, and the motor wizard complete. So we'll start from that point. The first thing we'll need to do is start Linmod Talk and log into the drive. We'll double click on the Linmod Talk icon, and that should bring up Linmod Talk. The next thing we'll do is click on File and we'll log in. We'll pick our COM port, COM1, no password, and say OK. And then we'll be able to communicate with it. So here we are in our control panel. What we'll do is we'll start with a very simple move that we call a triggered VA interpolator move. This move is more commonly known as a trapezoidal move. This type of move requires position, velocity, acceleration, and deceleration. Triggered means that the system will make one move typically out when the trigger bit goes true and then another trapezoidal move typically back when the trigger bit goes false. The first thing we'll do is we'll go in and we'll configure that trigger bit. So we're going to click on parameters, expand motion control software, click on drive configuration, we're going to go to X4 IO definitions. That's where you define the discrete I.O. bits on the X4 connector. That connector might be a little different on other drives. And we're going to go to X4.6 or X4 connector pin 6. Here is all of the functions that we can assign to pin 6 and we're going to assign it to be a trigger input. We're going to double click on the circle there and it's going to tell us the firmware in the drive is running. It must be stopped before the parameters can be written into the drive. So do we want to stop it? Yes, we do. So we'll stop the firmware and then you can see that that change has taken effect. So now pin 6 has been configured to be the trigger input. So the next thing we'll need to do is we'll need to configure the trigger input so we're going to go down to this folder right here, Trigger X4.6. We're going to expand that. We're going to click on Trigger Modes. And right now, the trigger mode is none, so basically it won't do anything. So we're going to change that to be the Direct Mode. Double click on that again. The Inhibited Mode means that it will be debounced basically and the delayed mode can be used if you want to delay the trigger from happening for some period of time after the physical bit goes true. This is basic so we won't worry about those so we're going to make the trigger bit direct and then we can roll that up. Next what we'll need to do is to tell the drive what mode it's in or what kind of a move it's going to make. So we're going to roll this up, roll up drive configuration. We're going to go to motion interface and expand that. Expand run mode settings. Click on run mode selection. And here's all the different modes or the different moves that we can make. And as I said earlier, we're going to make the triggered VA interpolator mode. So we're going to double click on that. And I will point out here that notice that there's these little red L's on these uh, parameters here. These little red L's mean that these are live parameters and that these can be changed without needing to shut down the firmware. So our run mode is going to be the triggered VA interpolator. And now we'll set up the moves. So we're going to go to this triggered VA interpolator settings folder. We'll expand that. Here we have trig fall config and trig rise config. Basically that means what move will it make when the trigger bit rises or goes true and what move will it make when the trigger bit falls or goes false. So right now if we click on trig rise config, there are the four things that you need for a trapezoidal move. Your position, your speed, your axel, and your decel. And if we want to change those, 
we can click on position. You see that up here the 50 millimeter shows up. We can change that from 50 to 60 millimeters. Click on the green checkbox to, to have that take effect. And then you can see here that now our position will be 60 millimeters. Our max speed will be 0.1 meters per second. We'll change that to 0.05 meters per second and click our checkbox. Our acceleration is 1. We'll change that to 10. Click the green check. Our deceleration is 1. We'll change that to 10. Check that. That sets up our rise config, basically what move it's going to make when the trigger bit goes true. Then we can go to trig fall config, what move will it make when the trigger bit goes false. And we'll just leave those at default. Okay, so we've set up the move. We'll roll this up. And now to actually get this to run, we'll go to our control panel. And we have really nothing going on because our firmware is stopped, as indicated by this. So to start the firmware, I'm going to click the green arrow, reboot, and say, yes, I really do want to reboot the drive. Yes. And now we will go online with the drive. The first thing we need to do is to enable the drive. So in order to do that, we'll need to take control of the switch on bit of the control word here. So we'll click on this box, this Enable Manual Override. So that allows us to force the bit. Since it's already on, we'll need to turn it off and then back on again in order to have it actually enable. So we'll click on it to switch it off and click on it again to switch it on or enable it. Notice over here it's telling us that the motor is not homed. So we'll go to the Home bit We'll enable manual override on that. And when we click on the home bit to make it go true, we should home and you should see it move. So here we are, the drive is moving in order to hit up against the hard stop, which will home it. Now it's homed, and I can tell that by looking at bit 11 here on the status word. That's telling me that the motor is homed and we're ready to go. So in order to actually move, we will have to make the home bit go false. And now it tells us over here that our operation is enabled. So in order to actually make the move, you might remember that we made X4 pin 6 the trigger bit. So we're going to go down to the I.O. panel here. We're going to enable manual override for pin 6. And now when we actually make the trigger bit go true, we should make a move. And you should see that happen. So there's the move out, I believe, to 60 millimeters. That's shown over here. And then when the trigger bit goes false, we can go back to zero millimeters, and here we go. So, there you have it. We're making a move. Trigger bit true, go out. Trigger bit false, we go back. Now, that's a pretty slow move. If we want to make a faster move, then we can go back to our motion interface, run mode settings, triggered VA interpolator settings, and our trig rise config, and we can change that. Instead of a max speed of 0.05 meters per second, we can go to a max speed of, let's say, 1 meter per second. And instead of an Axel and D-cell of 10, we can go to, say, an Axel rate of 50. And a D-cell rate of 50. Notice I make my change, and then I click my green checkbox. Now we can go back to our control panel, and when we make our trigger bit true, we should have quite a bit faster move. And there it is. We haven't changed the trig fall config, so our move back to zero millimeters will still be slow. So fast out, slow back.
So now we've actually made a move. And of course, this is what we've wanted to do all along. So I'm Jeff Burt. Thanks for watching the video. I hope it's been helpful.